Okay, thank you. It says recording. And we have one attendee, okay. Uh, so I, I'd like to uh, first call this meeting to order. And uh, I just uh, have a couple of things to go through real quick. Uh, for the public, uh, you'll have an opportunity to uh, have a public comment period and to comment on our uh, public hearing on our proposed budget. Uh, there are three ways that you can do that. You can go to www.lewistonmaine.gov slash 2020cc. Or you can send us an email at public comment at lewistonmaine.gov. Uh, and if you don't have access to either of those, you can call us by telephone at 513-3017. Uh, I'll let everybody know that uh, if by chance we go to public comment and we're only there for a minute and move on to our agenda at any point, if the public begins to comment, we'll. Uh, take a break in our meeting to hear those comments before we move on. Uh, and that goes with our, for our public hearing on the proposed budget as well. Uh, if we go beyond that agenda item, if uh, somebody from the public uh, would like to comment on that, they can at any time. Uh, again, at public comment at lewistonmaine.gov or www.lewistonmaine.gov slash 2020cc or at the telephone number where you can talk to uh, a staff member here, 513-3017. Okay, uh, first uh, item is an update from the city, uh, an update on the city's actions regarding the COVID-19 pandemic situation and related city actions. And I believe uh, Deputy City Administrator Dennis Dote will take that. Good evening, uh, Mayor, City Councilors. Um, just a, a brief update here on uh, the city's uh, response to COVID-19 to date. Um, just as you know, uh, the governor's stay-at-home order was effective April 2nd. Um, since that time, our staff, our city staff, still remain uh, open, I guess, from a, delivering essential services, still closed to face-to-face meetings here in City Hall. Um, police, fire are still fully staffed. We're uh, we're delivering on essential services. Our public works staff uh, continue under a rotating schedule, trying to minimize our exposure through their activities as well. Um, I think the key point on that: essential services are still happening. City Hall is still opening for open for service. Just um, we have reduced our staff to the minimum levels uh, to be able to operate. Uh, communications activity. We continue to add new in, uh, information to our COVID-19 webpage located on the city's website. Last week, uh, you may have seen we released a video update that included Mayor, Mayor Kerr, uh, Fire Chief Brian Stockdale, Economic Development Director Link Jeffers, and myself. Um, we're, we're continuing to work on additional videos. Um, and those will continue to roll out as we move forward. Um, We've also completed and released several videos in multiple languages. Those videos, you can find those, they've been shared on social media, but you can also find those on our COVID-19 update page. Uh, additional closures and uh, just schedule changes that we've experienced since our last update, uh, effective April 1st, all CityLink buses were reduced to a half capacity to allow for better social distancing, and an additional bus was added um, to address any capacity concerns due to that reduction. Um, effective April 3rd, the Lewiston Oak Street bus station was closed and that will remain closed through April 30th. And effective April 13th, uh, the solid waste facility will reduce the hours of service to being open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And that will also last through April 30th. Um, as you're also probably aware, we recently heard the schools will remain closed through the rest of this, uh, this school year. Uh, ongoing planning and work that we continue, uh, we continue to work on sourcing the, the much needed PPE and supplies. Chief Stockdale and uh, Heather Hunter are continuing to work those angles to try to uh, get our supplies where we feel more comfortable um, that they'll last through, through, through this duration. Um, we also continue our planning around uh, homeless shelters and, and addressing some of our most uh, vulnerable um, in this in related to a shelter as well as food. Um, those needs and those, that work is just ongoing and we continue to 
um, touch base with our various agencies in the community that are that are providing this service to ensure that we're staying in tune with their concerns, their needs. Um, and today, as of today, we've we've heard from a few that are looking for some volunteers and and that such. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna see what we can do to help connect some of those those dots for them. Um, the, lastly, the uh, the mayor has been working with our economic development uh, department to address concerns related to our landlords and tenants um, and the, the issues that they're contending with under the current environment. And I think we can expect uh, some information to come to the city council for consideration, um, hopefully soon in, in the next upcoming meetings. Um, that's have at this point. I'll take any questions if there's any. Mr. Mayor, you were muted. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, any questions from any counselors? All right, very good. Thank you. Uh, next item is acceptance of the minutes of March 17th, 2020. Uh, I'll entertain a motion and just remind everyone we'll be doing all votes by, uh, by a roll call vote. So moved. Second the motion. Moved by Councillor Ray, seconded by Councillor Clement. Uh, call the roll. Uh, Councillor from Ward 1. Yes. Word two. Councillor Pettengill. So, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you. Word three. Yes. Word four. Uh, uh, is hasn't been able to join us yet. Uh, word five. Yes. Thank you. Word six. Yes. And word seven. Yes. Motion passed by a vote of six to zero. And Mr. Mayor, for the uh, sake of the record, could we do the roll call um, just as far as attendance as well? Yes, please. Okay, great, thank you. Um, Councilor from Ward 1 is present. Uh, Councilor from Ward 2 is present. Councilor from Ward 3 is present. The Councilor from Ward 4 is still working on his connection for the meeting. Councillor from Ward 5 is present, Councillor from Ward 6 is present, and Councillor from Ward 7 is present. The Mayor, of course, is present. In addition, for City staff, uh, Ed Barrett, City Administrator, Dennis Dote, Deputy City Administrator, and Heather Hunter, Finance Director. Thank you. And, uh, for the record, Councillor uh, Michael Joy, uh, his power was lost at his residence, and that's why he's having issues with his connection, but we're hoping he'll join us soon. Okay, we're at the uh, public public comment period. Any member of the public may make comments regarding issues pertaining to Lewiston City Government. Uh, you'll have approximately three minutes uh, for your comments. And like I said previously, uh, if by chance we move beyond this agenda item, uh, we will come back if we see that there are some comments. At this point, I don't see any. Uh, I'll check with Deputy City Administrator Dote, are there any emails? No, uh, sorry. Not at this time. Okay, thank you. Okay, the uh, consent agenda. Uh, and Mr. Mayor, if we could just say, just for clarification, all roll call votes for this meeting will begin with the Council of Ward 7. Thank you. And the consent agenda. It consists of two e uh, items this evening. Item number one, order authorizing execution of municipal quick claim deeds for real estate located at 53 Morse Avenue and 64 Pettengill Street. And number two, resolve authorizing the city administrator to issue a letter of no objection to Bates College to install and maintain an electrical duct bank underground in the Bardwell Street right of way. Thank you. If there are no concerns with the consent agenda, we'll call the roll. Mr. Mayor. Um, given, Ray. Thank you. Given that one, um, the second agenda item has to do with my employer, I'd like to recuse myself from the consent agenda vote. Okay, thank you. Okay, would you like us to do those in two separate items, Mr. Mayor? Councilor Ray, you'd be all set with splitting that so that you could vote on the first one? Sure. Okay. Yes, Madam Clerk, thank you. Okay, great. And if we could just have a motion to move the consent agenda, Mr. Mayor? 
So moved. Moved, moved by Councilor Jensen, and I didn't catch the second. Second. I'll second. Nope. Seconded by Councilor Gelinas. Great. Thank I'll you very much. Thank you. Uh, so uh, the for the adoption of item number one, the order authorizing execution of municipal, municipal quick claim deeds for real estate located at 53 Morris Avenue and 64 Pettengill Street. Councilor from Ward 7? Yes. Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? Yes. Ward 3? Yes. Ward 5? Yes. Ward 6? Yes. Great, thank you. Motion. And, um, Mr. Mayor, you do have the right to vote in the absence of a city councilor. Would you like to do that? Yes, and my vote would be yes. Okay, thank you. So motion passes by a vote of seven to zero. The next item, uh, item number two, resolve authorizing the city administrator to issue a letter of no objection to Bates College to install and maintain an electrical duct bank underground in the Bardwell Street right of way. Council so Council Who moved that? Councillor Khalid. Okay, moved by Councillor. Well, I think it has the yeah. We'll have to do a second one on that, Kathy. Um, we can if you'd like. I was viewing it as the consent agenda under one motion, but we can certainly do two separate. That's fine. No, I think I think as long as the first one covered it, I just wanted to make sure. So we're, we'll be on set on that. Go ahead and call the roll. Okay. So again, this is for item number two. Councillor from Ward Seven. Yes. Ward One. Yes. Ward two? Yes. yes. Ward three? Abstaining. Oh, sorry, I knew that, thank you. Ward five? Yes. Ward six? Yes. And Mr. Mayor? Yes. Motion passed by vote of six to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, agenda item number three is our public hearing on the proposed FY21 budget, and I'll turn that over to City Administrator Ed Barrett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll just do a very brief introduction here because clearly this budget was originally presented to the City Council in the middle of March uh, prior to the declaration of the current uh, medical emergency. And I know that things have changed since then and will continue cha to change going forward. But the budget as originally presented called for an overall uh, increase in city and school, exp school expenditures of about 4.2%, um, somewhat offset by a growth in revenues and by a significant increase in the school department's carry forward, uh, which brought the tax rate increase down to, at that time, 3.35% with um, an overall increase of, of uh, about 97 cents. Since then, there have been some changes in the school budget and some other budgets that have resulted in uh, even further reduction on the part of the school department in particular. They went back and cut about one and a half million dollars from their budget, which brought the, uh, their increase down to 15 cents, which is why we ended up at 97 cents. Um, the city itself, uh, we have not done too much, a little bit of adjustment. We are in the process, obviously, of once again gearing up to have budget hearings starting next Tuesday. So um, at the moment, we started with a $1.75 tax increase. We're now down to 97 cents, but we have not yet started dealing with the city side of the budget. There will be some significant discussion going forward, obviously, not only in terms of just the budget as originally presented, but also trying to react and adjust to what is likely to be a situation where we'll see some impacts on our revenue side of the budget, and where certainly people are going to be struggling with a little bit of an economic uh, hardships over the next few months. That's complicated by a couple of factors. One is that we don't know what uh, kind of assistance might be coming down from the federal government beyond the current assistance, which is largely being routed toward um, COVID response expenses. There has been some discussion at the federal level about a more generalized uh, support for state and local government, but that has not yet been adopted. We also don't know for sure what the impact is going to be on the state budget and what impact uh, that might have on state shared revenues, either in terms of general purpose aid to education, which is of course uh, probably the major revenue source, uh, particularly for the school department, as well as state revenue sharing. 
So we will have some very serious and difficult, I think, discussions ahead of us as we try to come to grips with this. And as we operate in an environment where there is going to be a, a fair amount of uncertainty going forward, at the time we adopt the budget, uh, we're gonna have to obviously make some assumptions. Those assumptions will only be proved out over time. One of the things that I think uh, Heather and I and some of the department heads have been talking about is trying to do as much as possible to preserve the city's emergency reserve, our fund balance, so that we have a cushion uh, going into the new year, so that if things are worse than even projected or don't write themselves quickly, we'll have some flexibility to cover shortfalls going forward. So that's kind of just an overall uh, presentation of where we were. Uh, that budget that was presented is on the city's website. People can go out and take a look at it. I will say that it's probably not uh, accurate any longer and certainly will not be reflective of the budget that we finally adopt. So with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions or certainly let the uh, public have an opportunity to weigh in at this point. Okay, let me uh, check with uh, uh, Deputy City Administrator, anything pending for public comment or questions? Yeah, I have no questions coming through email or through the attendees at this point. Okay, and let me just double check with our finance director if we've gotten any calls. No, Mr. Mayor, we haven't. Thank you. And I'll just remind the public that as we move on, uh, you can submit your questions or comments and we'll make sure we go back to them. Any questions or comments from the council? Ed? One other quick reminder that uh, this is the first of two budget hearings. There will be another budget hearing further on in the budget process. And so people uh, should feel free to make comments at any point between now and the time the budget is adopted either by uh, email at the uh, comment, uh, public comment uh, at lewistonmain.gov or by calling um, the telephone number that was given out that would get people in contact with our finance director, Heather Hunter. Any comments we receive will be passed on to both the uh, city council and if appropriate, the school committee. All right, thank you. Uh, Councilor LaJoy is joining us, I think. Uh, Deputy City Administrator Dote is going to pull him in here shortly. Any uh, any questions or comments from the council? Okay, seeing none, I will uh, close this public hearing. Just reminding everyone, if we need to, we will go back to it for further comments or questions. Gender item number four. Item number four, resolve adjusting the penalties established by policy of the rental registration ordinance for failure to register, delaying penalties until the month beginning at least 30 days after the expiration of the state of emergency declared by the governor on March 15, 2020. Requested action to approve the resolve adjusting the penalties established by policy for the rental registration ordinance for failure to register delaying penalties until the month beginning at least 30 days after the expiration of the state of emergency declared by the governor on March 15th, 2020. So moved. Second. Moved by Councillor Gelinas. I'll second. Seconded by Councillor Clement. And uh, Ed, do you want to say anything about that? Sure, I think everybody knows this is a new program that we were gearing up this year and uh, actually kicked it off and have had some people uh, apply for, their, for their, um, their applications, get their applications in for registration. We have had a lot of difficulties with the scaled down staffing that we have and responding to the emergency situation and simply keeping up with that workload and doing things like following up to try to contact people who haven't registered yet. So I think we probably have about two thirds of the folks who've sent something in, but we have another third that haven't. And I suspect many of them are also struggling with their own uh, demands on their time given the circumstance. We just kind of feel like it would be difficult for us to even start to try the pro to, to begin the process of finding people given the limited staff resources we have in the office and the fact that we haven't even been able to get all of the applications we've received to date into our system. 
So this is just one of the of a number of measures we're taking in, in recognition of the emergency situation. Okay, thank you. Any uh, questions or comments from the council? Um, Mr. Mayor, I have a comment. Go ahead. Um, so I'm wondering if we can, um, so this is suggesting to extend it by 30 days um, whenever the emergency is lifted, but I'm wondering if we can do it um, another month or even two more months. Um, Cause I, I don't think one month, extending a one month is enough, especially people will be dealing with a lot of things after this crisis is over. So um, if we can have another month or even two, that would be great. Okay, so you're, you're suggesting we go beyond the 30 days of the expiration of the state of emergency. Uh, any other counselors have Councilor Pettengill? So, uh, so um, I'm in agreement with Councilor Khalid, um, but I, I wonder if instead of um, enacting it 30 days after the emergency is lifted, if we could uh, revisit this 30 days after the emergency is lifted, um, just due to the amount of people that haven't paid their rent this month and that problem's gonna compound over time. But I think it's something we should revisit to best be able to see when we can enact this. Uh, so that's not, a, I think that's a wise uh, thought because, you know, maybe two weeks before the expiration, we just bring it up before the council again to make sure, you know, that they're okay with that. Would be, would you be okay with that, Councilor Khalid? Um, I didn't understand his suggestion, um, Councilor Pengel's suggestion. Well, basically, we'll revisit this just before it, before that 30 day mark. So that, oh, uh, okay. That's you know, fine with me. Okay. Is that okay with the rest of the council? Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Uh, I'd call, can you call the roll, Kathy? And I'm not sure if you've noticed that it appears Council of the Joy is on there. Mike, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. I'm on the phone. All right. Thank you. Uh, call the roll, Kathy. Councilor from Ward 7? Yes. Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? Yes. Ward three? Yes. Ward four? Yes. Ward five? Just clarification, are we voting on a motion to um, wait, like what Zach, uh, what Councillor Pettengill said? We're voting. Uh, no, sorry, Mr. Mayor. No, go ahead. Uh, we're voting on the original motion, uh, Councillor. My understanding is, is that we're just going to monitor the situation because we don't know the expiration date for the emergency. And the original, um, the original motion will go into effect 30 days after that. So at that point, um, at the point of the expiration of the emergency, then we'll sort of reassess where things are and we can always put it on the city council agenda for an extension at that time. Yes. Thank you. Councilor from Ward 6? Yes. Great, thank you. Motion passes by vote of seven to zero. Thank you, agenda item number five. Item number five, order authorizing the city administrator to sign a letter of donation and release of agency obligation form related to a slope easement at 94 River Road. Requested action to approve the order authorizing the city administrator to sign a letter of donation and release of agency obligation form related to a slope easement at 94 River Road. Okay, thank you. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilor Jensen, seconded by Councilor Khalid, and I believe our Public Works Director will be briefly presenting. Sure. Um, there's uh, two projects on um, River Road, one beginning at Alfred Plourd Parkway and goes to Razzleway, and then a second one immediately after that from Razzleway um, down to Mount Hope Avenue. They're kind of paired up projects. They both came through the ATRC process, so they're federal projects, so they're 80% federal, 10% state, and 10% Lewiston. The design is complete. Um, the design will be going out for bid this fall um, for construction next year. As part of that design, there are a number of strip takings to accommodate um, different, kind, different drainage. There's one section that actually is a section um, owned by Lewiston, and that's between 
um, in your packet you have a map, but that's between um, the turnpike and the entrance to the city's quarry. And really what this is, is donating um, two hundredths of an acre, a very thin strip for a slope easement. Um, the Federal, um, Federal Highways Uniform Act would require that um, any taking would be compensated for unless um, the entity um, owning the property were to donate it. The city, this is in part the city project, city's designing it. The city actually designed the slope. So it would be um, seem, seem odd that, um, that we would sell that to the state who would 10% um, of that sale would actually have to come from us. Um, again, it's only two hundredths of an acre. It's a very thin strip. If you went out there today, there is a, a riprap slope there. It's just extending up a few more feet. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Any uh, questions or comments from the from councilors? If not, call the roll. Councilor from Ward 7? Yes. Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? Yes. Ward 3? Yes. Ward four? Yes. Ward five? Yes. And ward six? Yes. Motion passed by vote of seven to zero. Thank you. Uh, agenda item number six. Item number six, order authorizing the city administrator to sell the property located at 1028 Sabata Street. Requested action to approve the order authorizing the city administrator to sell the property located at 1028 Sabata Street. So moved. Moved by Second. Councilor Ray, seconded by Councilor Clement, I believe. Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, I believe Ed will present on this one. Oh, no, very is it? Yeah, it is Ed. Thank yep, you. very, very briefly, uh, this is a piece of property that the city has come to own through a matured tax lien. It's land and an abandoned uh, single family residence that is in very bad shape and likely would have to be uh, condemned and demolished if we continue to maintain it. We had an expression of interest from uh, a company that's located across the street from this property, Deblois Electric, that is interested in uh, potentially using the property for parking for their uh, employees across the street. They are willing to pay $10,000 for the land and also to bear the cost of demolishing the building. Um, those two amounts together, if we had to demolish the building, it would probably cost us as much, if not more, than the property is worth. So they uh, put a bid in through a bid process. They were the only bidder, and we recommend that we sell the property to them. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments from councilors? Councilor Jensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm fully supportive of the motion. I just want to at least acknowledge that the building on the property is 135 years old. No, it's certainly not salvageable. I felt like we should at least acknowledge it as part of Lewiston's history and never we tear down an old building like that. All right, thank you. Any other questions or comments? If not, uh, call the roll. Council from Ward 7? Yes. Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? Yes. Ward 3? Yes. Ward 4? Yes. Ward 5? Yes. Ward 6? Yes. Motion passed by vote of 7 to 0. Thank you. Agenda item number 7. Item number 7, resolve waiving interest and penalties on water, sewer, and stormwater balances due until June 1, 2020. Requested action to approve the resolve waiving interest and penalties on water, sewer, and stormwater balances due until June 1, 2020. So moved. Moved by Councilor Gelinas. Second. Seconded by Councilor Clement. Uh, Heather Hunter, our finance director, will present on this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is an uh, idea that we had initially when we wanted to, uh, or when we deferred the tax due date from March 15th till June 1st. Um, at the time, we were still working with the PUC to see if we were able to defer interest and penalties on water consumption as well. Um, there was a bit of a delay to hear um, their final word on that, and now we have that permission to do that. So we are putting this order before the council tonight. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments from the council? 
If not, call the roll. Council from Ward 7? Yes. Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? Yes. Ward 3? Yes. Ward 4? Yes. Ward 5? Yes. And Ward 6? Yes. Motion passed by vote of 7 to 0. Thank you. Agenda item number 8? Item number eight, order authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement with Dennis Dote to serve as city administrator for the city of Lewiston. Requested action to approve the order authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement with Dennis Dote to serve as city administrator for the city of Lewiston. So moved. So moved. Moved by Councillor Ray, seconded by Councillor Clements. Uh, so I just, you know, real briefly want to say that uh, the council has had several uh, discussions about what we wanted to do uh, for the open position of city administrator. Uh, a decision was made by the group just to look in house because we knew there were several well qualified folks that work for the city of Lewiston uh, before we went elsewhere. I'm pretty proud of the fact, and I'm not sure when the last time we had a city administrator who was born and raised in Lewiston and had the talents that uh, Dennis Dote does and the experience that Dennis has. Uh, so I'm really proud as mayor that this council has the opportunity to appoint a city administrator who was born and raised in this area, has many friends and family in this area, has served our community in so many ways. Uh, so I'm excited about this vote. I was excited about this agenda item uh, being on tonight's agenda, as I think probably most of you are as well. Uh, any uh, questions or comments from the council? Uh, City Administrator Ed Barrett. Yeah, yeah. Just, just real quickly, um, at the time the position came open two years ago, one of my goals was to find someone who could step into my shoes and, and continue the organization on without missing a beat uh, at the time I was gonna retire. And I knew I would be retiring in the not too distant future. Uh, Dennis was of course over in Auburn. I was aware that uh, he might be interested in the position. So I jumped into hiring him because I knew even before I hired him that he had the ability and the interest to, take, to step in and take my place. The two years I've worked with Dennis have, have done nothing but reinforce my opinion that he is gonna be a very strong progressive leader for this city that will keep things moving forward and take us off into the future. So I'm very pleased that, uh, that Dennis will be the person selected to succeed me. Thank you, Ed. Councilor Ray. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to say what a great honor it was to receive Mr. Dote's application and go through that process of hiring with him. Um, three of us on this council have had now have the great opportunity to hire a new superintendent and now a new city administrator. And although we dearly uh, miss Mr. Webster and will deeply miss Mr. Barrett, um, we have set up the future of the city quite well, I believe. Um, and I also just want to apologize to Dennis that he had to wait 48 extra hours for it, but um, I, we know you're ready when, we're, when we call on you. So thanks for that. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the council? Call the roll. Councilor from Ward 7? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? A resounding yes. Ward 3? Yes. Ward four? Yes. Ward five? All right, capital Y-E-S. And ward six? A resounding and wholehearted yes. Excellent, motion passes by vote of seven to zero. I'm, uh, I'm disappointed somebody couldn't have abstained from that vote, so I got a vote in this one. <laughs> All right, congratulations, uh, Dennis. Would you like to say anything? I just briefly thank you all for the support. Um, it, it truly is an honor, um, as you mentioned, to, to be from this community and, and to be able to uh, step into this lead role. Um, it's been a pleasure uh, working with all of you. Um, Ed's leadership and guidance and mentoring over the last uh, you know three years has just been 
something I can't put uh, the proper words to describe to it. Uh, but I thank you all for the support, the very kind words tonight, and I just really look forward to uh, working with you all as we move Lewiston forward. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, agenda <laughs> item number Mr. Nine. Mayor, I, I uh, believe Councillor Khalid has a question or a comment. Okay, sorry, Councillor Khalid. No, that was a while ago. <laughs> it was, okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, if I missed one, Councilor Khalid, I apologize. We'll move to agenda item number nine. Item number nine, order authorizing the city administrator to execute a collective bargaining agreement with the Maine Association of Police. Requested action to approve the order authorizing the city administrator to execute a collective bargaining agreement with the Maine Association of Police. So moved. Moved by Councilor Ray. Seconded. Seconded by Councilor Gelinas, and Ed will be presenting. Yes, and again, I think just briefly, because Council's had an opportunity to discuss this on several occasions um, in executive sessions, as we often discuss labor negotiations. In the course of some recent discussions with the Maine Association of Police uh, that represents our patrol unit, the possibility of entering into a new three-year contract came up. Uh, with the notion being that it would be a very simple extension under existing terms and conditions, simply specifying um, the cost of living adjustments that would be involved. So this is a three-year contract. It does not start until July 1st of 2022. So it does not have any impact on next year's budget, but it will pick up uh, the year after that. It will last for three years and basically we'll put the um, contract in place so we don't have to worry about it given all the other things that are going on at this time. Uh, I will also point out that we certainly need to recognize the conditions and circumstances that our public safety personnel, both police and fire, are operating under at this time. Where they're out there in the community, they cannot shelter at home. They have to be out in the community interacting with the public, trying to keep them safe. Um, and trying to make sure that, that we have a, a good community going forward. And I think settling this contract and putting it to bed this early sends a message that shows the city's support and the city council's support for our folks who are out there on the front lines uh, working with Chief O'Malley and his staff to try to keep things in the city safe and comfortable for everyone. So strongly recommend your approval. Thank you, Ed. And I, you know, I'd like to just note it also shows support. Uh, from our police offices for our community uh, because they came to the table as well to help get this contract uh, done quickly so we can just move on with uh, uh, the imminent issues that we're dealing with on a daily basis from the pandemic so and then I'll just second what Ed said they're on the front lines right now and we just always have to recognize that any other questions or comments from the council and we have a motion and second on the table right Kathy we do, yes. Thank you. Uh, call the roll. Councillor from Ward 7? Yes. Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? Yes. Ward 3? Yes. Ward 4? Yes. Ward 5? Yes. Ward 6? Yes. Motion passed by vote of 7 to 0. Thank you. Gender item number 10? Item number 10, review of draft council priorities for 2020 through 2021. Requested action to discuss the draft goals from the city council planning session. Okay, thank you. And I'll turn that over to Ed for a brief introduction. Yes, um, at the end of February, the city council held a day long uh, session on a Saturday to talk about priorities for the next two years. And uh, subsequent to that meeting, uh, the person who worked as facilitator and Dennis and I put together a summary trying to pull together the ideas that the uh, council expressed an interest in pursuing at that meeting. Uh, without going into a lot of detail, they fall into a number of categories. Economic development, especially sustainable local development and supporting our, our local businesses. Uh, housing, which has been a long-standing concern in the community. Uh, continues to be one that we want to work on over the next couple of years, particularly working on housing quality, home ownership, uh, offering a variety of, of housing opportunities for people in the community. 
building closer relationships with the school committee um, was another one, along with the same same idea with our uh, new Mainer community, immigrant refugee community, working closely with them so that they can continue to become full partners in the city's uh, growth and development in the future. Enhancing our, the perception of Lewiston as a safe community through having a uh, policing plan for the community that targets particular issues of concern and uh, providing an enhanced police presence throughout the community. Infrastructure, recognizing the restraints of the city budget, trying to find creative ways to deal with our roads, sidewalks, other public facilities, uh, and exploring the need for indoor recreation facilities and other kinds of, of things that the community could benefit from. And then placemaking, which uh, ties in a whole lot of things, really building around being an age-friendly community, being a community of choice that people choose to live in because we offer the amenities and the, and, and the environment that they're looking for, emphasizing and building on our quality of life, enhancing recreation, and continuing to move forward on our Riverfront Island uh, master plan and redevelopment. Then finally, governmental services, just a number of things that the council is interested in exploring, including technology, looking at how City Hall operates in terms of the hours we're open, reviewing the city's environmental sustainability and carbon footprint, our favorite all-time topic, parking management, um, and other issues. And then, of course, employees, reviewing our uh, employee retention and benefit policies to make sure that we're offering a good working location for people to be attracted to, and then reviewing all the various committees the city has to determine why they exist, the responsibilities that make up, who staffs them, whether they're all necessary or whether we need to do some reshuffling. So those were the major priorities, and I know I skipped over some of the specifics, but one of the things that we normally do at some point is have the council formally adopt these, um, and I wanted to give everyone a chance to review them and comment on them and see if there's anything that needs to be changed, modified, and added or deleted before it comes back for final um, uh, review and approval. And uh, if you could, Ed, just uh, at some point, we're going to have to identify goals, which we probably should do before we adopt them, right? I think you could probably do it either before or after you adopted them um whatever the council felt most comfortable doing okay very good any uh questions or comments from the council council array and then council agilinus thank you mr mayor um in reviewing this it, it felt very um uh coincidental i don't think that's the right word but um the first two items are economic development and housing which are I think two of the biggest discussion points in this pandemic. Um, and so knowing that our lens was already focused there and that we have a group of folks who are committed to working on that, um, doesn't make me feel better about the situation, but it makes me feel um, that we are working towards the right outcomes. And so um, I think that was affirming in a way. Thank you, Councilor Gelinas and then Councilor Khalid. I, I was just gonna say that um, extend gratitude about this synopsis. I thought it was a very accurate representation of the discussion that was had and, and uh, yeah, great job. Thank you. Councilor Khalid. Um, I just wanted to comment that this list looks great and I'm glad that um, economic development is on top of the list, especially where we are right now um, with the current pandemic. Thank you. I, you know, I'm, I'm really excited about the list that uh, we created, created over that day. And I uh, just the discussion that we had all around these subjects uh, uh, reaffirmed in me what a great council we have moving forward. Uh, I know we, it, we, you know, our first two months were really exciting and seemed to be going really positive. And then, you know, like a light switch, uh, some things changed. Uh, but when it comes time to really start working on the recovery, which I already believe we're starting to do, uh, having these goals really will guide us uh, to do the best job possible for the community. Any other uh, questions or comments? Councilor Jensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
just looking through them right now for section D, um, enhancing perceptions of Lewiston as a safe community. Um, the three points are great. I do agree with them, but it just focuses on the policing component of it. Um, so I'm thinking maybe we should add something along the lines of uh, um, like code enforcement as well too. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, I think it does because code enforcement plays a factor in uh, having a safe community, I think. Uh, any other suggestions? Especially, especially around that subject, because you're right. That's you know now that we, there's only two, but it really is like the public safety and stuff. Councilor Khalid. Um, <clears throat> thank you. My other suggestion would be if it's possible to. I don't know if the listing um, matters, but I'm wondering if we can move D where um, C is. So switching between them. So after housing, um, the safety of Lewiston should be the second and then build a relationship. Maybe I know they may go hand in hand together in a way, but. No, I, I, think, uh, I think that's a great suggestion. And before we actually adopt these or possibly after, we're, we're gonna stop providing guidance to Ed on uh, the order of priorities for, the, for these goals. So, but I think that's a good, good suggestion up front. Councilor Clement. Yes, uh, Councilor Khalid must have been reading my mind okay. on our last comments. Uh, I also agree with Councilor Gelinas that the list is a very accurate uh, portrayal of what we discussed Saturday, decades ago, it seems now, but uh, a lot of things have changed since then. But I also agree that Section D on the enhancing perception of safe community should be moved right to the forefront. I, I think that's one of the things that I uh, made as a basic platform when I ran for council. Uh, it's something that I would like to see put in place and I think will enhance all of the other goals and objectives that we put forth. We, we really can't give justice to all of the other things unless we can assure that safety to begin with. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right, thank you very much. Uh, agenda item number 11, reports and updates. Councilor Ray. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, so from the school committee, as you can see, I'm now reporting from the Dingley building. Um, we held a workshop on Monday night to talk about um, the Lewiston High School and um, in this unique situation, um, how we're going to count credits, especially towards seniors and their graduation. Um, Mr. Langless, the principal at the high school, came up with an idea or um, in congruence um, with some members of his team of an 18 credit proposal. Currently, 240 out of the 380 seniors have already reached those 18 credits. So that would put us at a 63% graduation rate as of this moment without um, consideration for this semester. So we're exploring what else we can do to help those um, remaining 140 students across the finish line and how that might happen. As Mr. Dote mentioned at the top during our COVID-19 update, um, it was recommended by Commissioner Pender Macon that schools be closed for the remainder of the academic year. And so for us, um, that means until June 8th will be our last regular school day. Um, I wanted to give the biggest shout out in the world to the Lewiston Education Association, who has put together teams to deploy food at mobile feeding sites, and they've put out over 56,000 meals since the schools have been closed, which is just incredible. And in the past two weeks, they've taken up a tech rollout to get um, tech devices out to students so that they can do enrichment activities. Um, there's so much content on the LewistonPublicSchools.org website for uh, students and families to work on. So more to come there. Um, we also met in a meeting on Monday night where we updated our personnel policies, our COVID-19 sick leave, and then we also passed the budget as presented to City Council. So with that $1.4 million reduction from our, the superintendent's budget. Um, so that's what will be presented to us during that process. All right. To take any questions. Any questions for Councilor Ray? 
Uh, if it's okay with the council, uh, Ed, do you think we could draft a letter to the LEA for all the hard work that they continue to do, make sure that our, our children, our students are fed? Absolutely, no problem whatsoever. That'd be from the mayor and the council? Uh, yes. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, there's no objection to that, I, I assume. Great, thank you. Uh, any other reports or updates? Okay. Uh, any other city business councilors or other may have related to Lewiston city government? Councilor Ray. Thank you for indulging me tonight. Um, I also wanted to just make a note about the U.S. Census. Um, so it sounds like Maine is not doing so hot, um, and Androscoggin County might be part of that. And so I just wanted to read a little bit of information about the census. So you can fill out your 2020 census at 2020census.gov. And under their initial plan from May 27th to August 14th, they were supposed to do door to door operations, coming to your door, counting the people there if you don't turn in your form by mail, phone, or online. And so I definitely don't want anyone coming to my door. Um, in the future, I'm a little not sure when this will end and so um, in order to make their job e easier and also qualify us for a lot of federal funds that are sorely needed and will continue to be needed after the pandemic um, just want to put out a PSA to complete that if you can. Okay thank you. Anything else? Councillor Khalid. Um, thank you um, Councillor Ray for bringing that up. And I've been trying to do some videos regarding the census. Um, I know we've deal we're, we are dealing with a pandemic and everyone's stressed, but um, I just wanted to um, I just wanted to let everyone know um, to fill out the census. But I'm wondering if the city can also put um, more information out there on the city pages regarding the census and how convenient and easy it is to, you know, quickly fit, um, fill it out. But also how beneficial it is. Um, it's you know, ten minutes for ten years. That's gonna bring a lot of resources to our community. Um, I'm also doing um, a series videos of um, talking about the census. So if any counselors want to join me on Facebook Live when I figure that out, um, please let me know. So, yeah. All right. Thank you. And I see that Dottie is uh, watching this. So I'm sure she got your message on that. Any other comments from the council? I just, uh, you know, I'm going to be real quick. I just want to take a moment to... Uh, Thank our staff, thank our department heads. Uh, the last several weeks has been very challenging. Thank the counselors uh, and most importantly, our community. Uh, the chief of police put out an excellent message today, basically acknowledging some of the great work happening in our community to maintain social dis distancing. But he also you know, firmly ensured the community that we had to do that for the safety of all of our first responders, uh, you know, police officers, firefighters, our nurses, God bless that, every one of them. Uh, so a lot of hard work going on around this community and uh, it's happening right before our eyes every day. So I just want to acknowledge that. Uh, with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Moved by Councillor Ray, seconded by Councillor Clement. Call the roll. Councillor from Ward 7. Seven. <laughs> You're still muted, Stephanie. There you go. Yes. Thank you. Council from Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? Yes. Ward 3? Yes. Ward 4? Yes. Ward 5? Yes. And Ward 6? Yes. Motion passed by vote of 7 to 0. Thank you. Matt, we're all set. <laughs>